Dynamic Loot Filter is a tool that allows you to modify your Path of Exile loot filter on the fly with just a few button presses, giving you the benefits of a filter that is continually tuned to your item needs and character progression, and to the game's economy without interrupting the flow of your gameplay. It works on top of any filter blade loot filter, utilizing all the style customizations therein, and fully supports interleaving changes in filter blade and in DLF. Even if you don't normally use a filter blade filter, DLF offers such efficiency and power over your loot filter that just using it on top of an uncustomized filter blade base still yields a fantastic user experience. Previously, I released a trailer style video quickly showcasing some of the most universally valuable features of DLF. Since then, I've been working hard on adding new features and improving the old ones, and today marks the release of DLF version 1.1. In this video, I'd like to do a deep dive, giving a full feature walkthrough and also giving some explanation of how DLF works beneath the surface. This video won't be as flashy as the previous one, but it should be much more informative. The first step to using DLF is choosing your base filter. If you don't maintain a customized filter blade filter, just grab a NeverSync strict base and you'll be good to go. Either way, you'll need to download your filter blade filter to your computer. Having the file available locally allows DLF to make changes to it instantly and give you those changes immediately in game. When you set up DLF, you will create a profile. This contains the path to your downloaded filter, the path to your Path of Exile filters directory, and some more advanced features that we'll discuss later. For now, the important thing is that given these paths, DLF will be able to read your downloaded filter, parse it, apply its own changes, and then generate a new output filter in your Path of Exile directory. Then a single hotkey press will load the newly generated filter in Path of Exile and all your customizations will be immediately visible. The standard DLF usage looks something like the following. You're playing Path of Exile and realize you want to make a change to your filter. You press the DLF UI hotkey, which brings up the window you see here. You then select your changes in the UI and click Write Filter or press the corresponding hotkey, and DLF writes the changes and brings Path of Exile to the foreground. Finally, you press one more hotkey to reload the filter in-game. Bringing the UI to the foreground, we see that the largest section of the UI, which is one of the biggest selling points of DLF, is the Currency section, occupying the entire left column. This allows moving any currency type to any of the nine tiers defined in Filter Blade, as well as choosing the minimum visible stack size threshold for each tier, including those of Wisdom and Portal Scrolls. DLF's goal is to be as stylistically unobtrusive and true to your original filter's design as possible, and for that reason, all these currency tiers follow the style defined in Filter Blade. It's also good to know that default Filter Blade filters have inconsistent stacked and unstacked currency tiers. For example, single chaos orbs are considered tier 4, but stacked chaos orbs are considered tier 2. To resolve this, DLF uses the unstacked currency tiers as the source of truth, and unifies currency tiering on import. Now let's walk through a classic use case of currency tier manipulation. Suppose I've reached endgame content and I don't want to be slowed down by low value currency anymore. I can completely hide the bottom two tiers of currency, and move any additional currency items that are still bothering me to either of those last two tiers. Of course, much more customizability is achievable by adjusting the specific stack size visibilities for each tier, and placing currencies in their appropriate tiers as the market changes throughout the league. Splinters also offer similar functionality. For example, late in a league I might want to only show Zoth, Tull, and Esh splinters in stacks of 8 or higher. After currency tiering, the next most impactful feature of DLF is its support for Chaos Recipe items. When coupled with the Chaos Recipe Enhancer tool, which scans your stash tab and tells you which pieces you need to collect, Using DLF to do Chaos Recipes becomes very efficient. Suppose I just need rings and belts to make Chaos Recipes. I can select these two slots and deselect the rest. Chaos Recipe items will be marked as Crescent Moons on the minimap and color-coded by item slot. Furthermore, if you want to separate Chaos and Regal Recipe items, DLF distinguishes them by their background color. Chaos Recipe items have an orangish background, while Regal Recipe items have a bluish background. I will quickly add that Chaos Recipe items are the one exception to the DLF philosophy of always pulling the style from the input filter, because Filter Blade filters do not have dedicated Chaos Recipe rules in general. Thus, DLF adds its own rules on top of your filter in this case. The next feature below Chaos Recipes is super simple, but extremely useful. It allows you to select a map tier below which all non-unique maps will be hidden. As you progress through the atlas, you can periodically increment this value to keep your loot filter clean, and make sure the maps you see are always worth picking up. Conversely, if your map pool is dwindling, you can drop this back down for a little while, collect additional maps, and then raise it again. Next, I'm going to jump to flask base types at the bottom of this column. Finding the right flask base types is something that everyone has to do, but which I've always found to be a bit of an annoyance with a standard static loot filter. Either you set yourself up with a filter that shows the flasks you need, and then you end up seeing way more of them than you ever want, or you don't show them and have to buy them from a player when you know they're all over the ground, 
if only you had a way to highlight them. Well, now you do. Just select a base type and decide whether you want to see it in any item level or only a high item level. And as soon as you've got what you need, you can disable it and never be bothered by it again. Currently, the item level restriction is only a binary choice, either any or 84 plus, but I could certainly extend this to allow finer granularity item level restrictions in the future if players would find this useful. Now, let's return to general base types. In a similar vein to flasks, this feature allows you to show any base type and optionally specify whether you want to see only rare items or any non-uniques. This could be useful for crafting, chancing, or just plain old identifying items to upgrade specific gear pieces. Suppose I'm perusing my inventory at level 80 and realize I'm still wearing my gloves from the blood aqueduct. I don't know about you, by the way, but something like this almost never doesn't happen to me. So I can just add rares of my desired base type, for example, zealot gloves, and start identifying the drops. Similar to flasks, I can definitely see potential value in extending the functionality of this feature. In some situations, I'd rather specify an item class, perhaps paired with defense type criteria, for example, any rare energy shield boots. In other cases, specifying the item level may be super useful, for example, to look for crafting bases. There's a lot of room to grow this feature, but it's always important to balance UI simplicity with feature depth. So if these ideas would be useful for you, or if not, let me know. The next category of functionality deals with setting a visibility threshold for items that are tiered in some way. These tiers are determined by your filter blade input filter, and these options simply change the visibility of existing filter blade rules. Note that sometimes higher tiers are better, as in the case of essences, while other times lower tiers are better, as in the case of div cards and uniques. Regardless, the drop-down menus are always organized so that selecting the bottom option shows everything, and moving upwards in the menu yields progressively more restrictive selections. For example, if I want to stop seeing the incantation, I select a div card tier threshold somewhere in the middle, and low value cards will be hidden, while more valuable cards like lucky connections will still be shown. Next, we have the vendor recipe related functionality. Once again, these options operate on the built-in filter blade rules, so they'll keep the style in your specific filter. For quality gems and flasks, you can select a quality threshold, and for RGB items, you can select an item size threshold. For example, small corresponds to items that take up at most four inventory slots. This simple functionality gives you a great way to tone down quality in RGB litter as you progress to the end game. It can also be super useful if you suddenly need chromes or baubles in a pinch, as often happens in the early stages of a new league. For the end game, you can disable everything by setting the quality threshold to 21 and RGB items to hide all, and you'll have a nice clean filter. The next feature is one that I find to be super slick. It's more applicable to the early game, which makes its use cases potentially narrower than that of other features. But when you need it, it can be an absolute lifesaver. The hardest part about Path of Exile's early game is gear management, and the hardest part of gear management is socket management. Unless you have an incredibly customized early game filter for the specific build that you happen to be playing at League Start, it's almost guaranteed that at some point in the first four acts of the game, you'll be thinking to yourself, if only I had an item with XYZ sockets, my character would be so much stronger. Furthermore, you know that items with XYZ sockets are dropping on the ground, but you just can't see them. Well, DLF's socket patterns feature has come to rescue you from this inevitable tragedy. It allows you to define in as much specificity or generality as you would like the sockets that you're looking for. It uses a syntax similar to the one you get when you copy an item in Path of Exile, but additionally allows you to use the letter X to indicate a socket of any color. For example, suppose that I'm in part one and I'm short on sockets. To remedy this, I would like a helmet with four sockets. And right now my helmet has Arcane Surge Flame Dash, so I need two of those sockets to be linked blues. The socket pattern representing these criteria is B-B -B space X space X. And even though there are spaces after the blue sockets, rather than dashes, this pattern will match items with additional links beyond just blue blue. As another example, suppose I really need a four link, and I'm willing to give it a try as long as at least one of the sockets is blue. I enter the socket pattern B-X-X-X and set the item slot to any, and my loot filter will be updated to highlight exactly what I'm looking for. I really hope that this feature can relieve a lot of stress from players' early game socket jungling conundrums. The final feature on the UI is item rule matching. That's right, DLF contains an almost fully functional item rule matching engine, with a notable exception being rules with an area level criteria because it's impossible for DLF to know your current area level without hacking into the game's memory. To use this feature, simply copy an item's text to your clipboard with Ctrl C and click Find Rule Matching Clipboard. DLF then displays the rule from your filter that matches the given item and gives you the option to toggle the visibility of that rule. 
This is a great catch-all for random pesky items that you want to hide but aren't worth the UI space required to have their own dedicated section. For example, there almost inevitably comes a time in every league when you stop wanting to pick up rare jewels. For some people, that time might be 24 hours before league start when you're building your filter and filter blade, while the rest of us may retain some semblance of likely unjustified optimism about the potential value of these jewels. Once we realize just how unjustified this optimism is, we can control see the jewel in game, find the matching rule and hide it, and get back to slaying monsters, knowing that when we make the same mistake again next league, DLF will be there to help us out once again. Now that we've covered all the UI features, a natural question you may ask is, what if I want to change my filter in a way not supported by any of these features? Suppose for example I want to see veiled items of a particular immortal syndicate member, or I want to add an area level specific rule to highlight humility drops in the blood aqueduct. DLF offers two avenues of approach to this scenario. The first is to make the change in filter blade, then re-download and import your filter. Your profile stores all the alterations you've made to your filter through DLF, so you can switch between making changes in filter blade and DLF, and your final filter will retain the correct aggregation of all the changes you have made. To demonstrate this in action, let's start with a DLF profile that has enabled Chaos Recipe rings and amulets only. Now we go to filter blade and add a rule to highlight rings of Ashling's Veil. After downloading and importing this updated filter, we see a newly highlighted ring from the added filter blade rule, while DLF Chaos Recipe item functionality remains consistent with how it was in the previous filter. Some changes are impossible to make in Filter Blade though, and many others are possible but it would be much less convenient than working with the rule text directly for users who are familiar with the syntax. To this end, DLF allows you to specify rules to be added to your filter in raw text form. This is done in your profiles.rules file. Let's apply this to the example of highlighting humility cards in the Blood Aqueduct. I will go to the profiles folder and open the .rules file corresponding to my profile name, Apollos, with a text editor. As you can see, this file is formatted as a sequence of rules I'd like to add to my filter, with a blank line separating consecutive rules. I've added a couple rules already, but if this is your first time using your .rules file, it should be blank. I'll add a new rule here to highlight humility cards with a star icon and high value drop sound up through, say, T5 maps. Save the file, and use the DLF UI to re-import my filter. In Path of Exile, I see humility is now highlighted as expected. I hope this has helped you understand the features DLF offers, given you some idea of how it works behind the scenes, and helped provide some ideas for how you can use DLF to improve the efficiency or just plain old quality of life of your own Path of Exile gameplay. DLF is currently in a very flexible state of rapid growth and evolution, so please leave any suggestions or feedback you have in the Discord. All of the improvements DLF has seen over the past month since the last video have stemmed from players' feedback, suggestions, and discussions and I know there's still a tremendous space for future improvement to this tool. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback and exploring the potential of DLF as it evolves. With that, thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day, evening, or night.